Again, the performance from OLED. How will it be this time around? As we get ready once again to head into the draft for game number three. It's one to one across the board. We'll see how teams adjust from the previous games, the game plans, and once again, keeping our eyes on the roamer options here for Renegade and Boloiski. Yeah, you mentioned a key thing there, dictating the tempo. And I really think that's why we're not going to see Angela first pick again. <laughs> or at least yep. an Angela Rome. That's about as anti-tempo as you Yeah. Uh, game two was just putting proof to the pudding of Ren J and Boloiski want to play fast. That's it. So now Geek Fab, with them now on the blue side, they go with a patented blue side priority pick onto the Lilia. So now Blacklist will go for the Akai here. The Lilia pickup sort of turns off the Faribus getting picked up. Let's see if they're going to go switch it up, but no. Nope. They say, you know what, we can play into it. We can still try it. So maybe we can play a little bit faster than Geek Fam before the Lilia will hit that super late game annoying spike. Not only that, but Geek bans out the Matilda there just to slow them down even more. Yep. They don't want to let Blacklist get to that full tempo. So what is left for Renegade? We've seen him pick up the uh, we've seen him pick up the Cho here and there. There's plenty of options still out there. Does he go for something yeah. more aggressive? Does he fall back to the Raft? Because that does give them a little bit of movement, a little bit of speed yeah. around the map. It's been another fallback pick for Agreed. Blacklist. So definitely a still a still a few options. Is it going to be here or is it going to be in second phase? Yeah, uh, one of the more indirect answers to the Lilia is actually the Rafaela that you mentioned. Because of that extra movement speed, you get to negate a little bit of the slows that she can dish out, and at the same time, you can avoid the damage that a Lilia can dish out. And surprisingly enough, uh, heading into this, actually, there's the Rafaela. Beside the Matilda, Rafaela is actually the most picked of Renegade. So there, they lock that in. Now we go to the second phase, EXP lane. You know what would be spicy? If we see now Edward pick up something like the Kali or the Lapu Lapu for himself, give Luke a taste of his own medicine. It's interesting too, you know, the fact that the Fermis was picked up here into that first pick Lilia, right? Because a lot of times Lilia is the answer for the Nether Realm. You, you deal with it pretty well, you kind of expend that, but I still the like the fact begins. that they win with Raphael. You work around the fact that you have some extra movement speed, you have sustainability, but you know, that, le that leads us to, yeah, XP lane. Where does the focus I here? Mean, the you can already see, too, some respect lightning. once again the for Boloiski. They're going to take guns. out the Ruby. He still has, of course, the Grok available, too, if he wants to go that route. Edith is being taken out. Now, are we still expecting XP lane matchup with possibly the Lapu Lapu coming through? You already mentioned the Khalid here. Yeah. Uh, actually, the last time we saw Rafaela Faramis getting picked up by Blacklist International up against Onik, they actually picked up the... Khalid during that scenario. They had a Guinevere and a Bruno at that time. Uh, they might still be able to adjust a pick, so it might be a remix of that kind of draft, if ever. I think they definitely want to. Khalid is definitely an important pick here for the side of Blacklist, because if they don't, it's a great answer to the Faramis. It's a great answer to that group up strategy that Blacklist is bringing. So I think it's a very solid pick up front. On the side of Black, do they ban more? They take yep. out the Lapu. And then what? They take the Khalid here. Yep. And all it really leaves Geek with, he could still pick up the Arlot. Could be a solid answer, possibly, for Luke. Arlot, um, Riz. Riz. He's got the Riz. He's definitely got the Riz. That's about, I mean, for the most part, if, if it is Khalid, let's say it is Khalid for Blacklist International, and it seems where it's going. Unless Geek bans it right here. Yeah, unless, like. unless they just take it out right <laughs> of the picture. And then you're kind of looking at, OK, well, what? Still, what is it? Arlot, Terizla being open. Could see something yeah. like a Uranus come in into play here. Ooh, might be tough though. A punch for a I punch. Take out the oh, it really looks like a Khalid here. Could be a last two picks, Khalid. Uh, Khalid might be tough, but they might like to pick that up last pick. They can go Khalid fourth pick and then uh, Marksman into the last. If the Marksman gonna come in now, then it's gonna be a carry and then ca carry or a Brody. Because I don't see a one-one slotting into the lineup of Blacklist right now. Yeah, not only that, we saw how uh, we saw that how Marky did against the one-one last time with the Claude. They are gonna lock in the Khalid Geek Fam. Now looking for a roam. Right now he's lost in the sand. He's lost in the sand. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's, he's not there. So <laughs> he's, he's got his head in the Khalid. sand right yeah, now. Yeah, that's that's definitely Khalid. So he's gonna be locked in. Let's see what the answer is once Ooh. again. XP Ooh. lane still got the Trizla. Is that something you'd actually want to pick up? Terizla into it though? Oh, uh, well then, with the members of Blacklist grouping up together, but the fact that you're up against Atakai might be a little bit difficult uh, to make the Terizla work. 
Hmm, scratching my head right now. Maybe they'll go to the classic Arlot route. Minotaur. Oh, oh, choose Minotaur. Okay, yeah. So it's Arlot Minotaur. So I'm really guessing carry here for Blacklist International. Brody would be okay too, but my heart's speaking, yelling carry. I think the Arlot's a solid pick, right? It gives it gives a big possibility to be able to split Blacklist up a little bit, or if they are all grouped together, you can push everyone in. So there's a few answers with Luke here. It's definitely not the normal dive Terizla or Lapu Lapu that we've been seeing him play, but still very solid. He's able to be aggressive on it. And Boloiski as well, this is something I wanted to see, something that can meet Blacklist here head on. I think the major the major thing they have to do here is just kind of play around the Akai, because if you dive in, as you mentioned, you get caught by that heavy spin. Yep. I've been it's GG. Hey. Right. As you mentioned, Redmar on point. There's the carry. Picks up. Fitting for this situation as well, considering the fact that they are quite tankiness across from you. Okay, so uh, I'm leaning a little bit more towards the draft of Blacklist International, but again, uh, for me, the biggest factor here for Geek Fam will be uh, Bloisky's play on the Minotaur. Uh, how he plays this alongside the timing of Luke's final slashes as the Arlot might actually be enough to disrupt the Faramis centered composition of Blacklist International. And then at the same time, with the Claude and the Baksha entering, and of course, Arlot dashing around, how Geek Fam executes this in the team fight will be the main determinant if, of who will be winning this game number three. We're going to find out once again as we load up into the land of dawn. It's one to one in the series between a Geek Fam, Blacklist International. Who steps closer to that match point? It all unfolds here as things get situated once again, talking about the lineups. Quite a bit of tankiness for a Geek Fam. Does Blacklist International have the answer for it with oh. that carry pick? It's actually a really interesting play here uh, by Blacklist. They went straight into the mid lane to get a little bit of burst down onto Beloys. He maybe even potentially get a pick off there by sending Edward there with the slashes. Not going to be able to get the kill, but they do send uh, Beloisky back a little bit, which sort of tempers the rotation of Geek Fam. Yeah, and it sets Geek Fan back because one of the things I was worried about with Blacklist is they do have, once again, similar to kind of game one, a softer, supportier mid lane right now. And sending Edward into the mid lane there to kind of already give them a little bit of a boost, a little bit of push into the enemy territory really helps back Blacklist in this tempo. Ooh. Yep, I like that. Real quick, emblems, anything sticking out here, Renmar? Master Assassin of the Khalid. This is the Assassin full damage Khalid that we're going to be getting. So a Khalid that can... Maybe be the guy to force out the black shoes of the Lilia. One of the biggest things that Blacklist International need to do if they want to be a little bit more comfortable in the team fights. That's like typically, you know, again, when Khalid is picked up, you kind of expect Dold on Marky and Ohab just okay. Okay. Marky not exactly getting the better as game one. This is going to be the second game in a row. Oheb is winning out on some of these trades. Yeah, going back to the point again, Khalid, I feel like this part is going to be very important, right? Yeah. Uh, for the fact that usually you see Khalid enter second in some of these team fights, but this time he actually, Edward might be making the initiation. As you mentioned, your, your whole goal is, let's get that black shoes out from a boy, let's kind of work around that. Once again, even the fact that you have to work against the Minoan Fury from Beloisky. If that is all expended, then Blacklist International is in a great position to win some of those early skirmishes and team fights later on. Oh, oh, look at that. A lot of damage on Edward. Force use to flicker. Luke looking for the spin. Oh, heavy oh. spin comes. Luke able to flicker to the side. Edward going to get some of his health back with that sand oh. guard. But now Niall going to lock on a sensory. They know he doesn't have the heavy spin. Bloisky there as well. The Nether Realm comes out. And now oh. the response waiting on the final slash. Raging Sandstorm from Edward. Able to help disengage Luke. Very low, trying to back off. Renny J on the chase, but the turtle still low. Niall able to secure. Beloisky on the front side. Lucky. A nice stun on two members with an Owens Fury. Two members taken out. UA and Renny J back to base. Big miscalculation there by Blacklist International. They forced, they had their heavy spin forced out in the bottom lane. That means the Geek Fam relatively free turtle, but Sensui. Sensui. Able. That was dangerous. Oh, oh Edward! Oh. Here to equalize. Can he, can he, can he, he's can still he, can going? He, can he, can he, okay, no, he's just, he's just, look at my sand, man. Yeah. It's, it's pretty he's cool, sand, right? nerd. Just look at it. Look at right? my sand. <laughs> but did you just say eat sand, sand. nerd? Eat sand, nerd. Yeah, it works, right? It's Edward. It is Edward. <laughs> now looking at the gold earned here. Marky, though, farming up pretty good in comparison to Oheb. 
Yeah. Uh, those two, for the entirety of the series so far, it's been very action-packed. Just to yes. leave them be, right? This is the thing where usually I talk about the gold lane experience, but like these guys have their own version of it. They just duke it out in the gold lane, while the rest of the team kind of puts pressure everywhere else. Yeah. So now we're going to be seeing a Blacklist International go into the top side jungle of Geefam a little oh. bit. Oh! Oh, they're looking Yue. for Yue here. Does have the Nether Realm, should be able to get away from this safely, but if they can pop it out, it could help with an advantage. Blacklist, though, all grouped up at the top. They're ready for this. Yeah. And right now, Blacklist International are playing like a team where they know and understand the condition of we have to not necessarily win the mid, just control the mid. Because that means our side lanes will be a little bit easier to deal with in terms of like supplementing Oheb, making sure Edward's comfortable with going on the 1v1s against Luke's Arlon. If you look at the items already, the Ferocious Scythe on the carry, Still waiting on the... D oh, wait, no. There it is. The DHS. Just it, yep. They just grabbed it. Uh, for Marky. So, still tempered right now as rotation. A little bit slower, a little bit more methodical are what these two teams are doing. Yeah. Still focused on the mid lane. Ow. Again, a lot of this, you can see them kind of already getting in position. Turtle's going to be up here. Second one of the game. Both teams where they want to be. Gold laner staying on the bottom side of the map. They're going to go ahead and just not be a part of this. Turtle, take Nile it. Nile able to take it. Geek fam, kind of controlling the pace right now. Nice heavy spin from Luke, trying to lock on to Edward there. Yep. Down at the orange buff too, Beloisky. Geek fam just in itself right now is being so aggressive. Edward forced to use the Raging Sandstorm as a getaway. Yeah, and now that final slash that we saw earlier from Luke and with Blacklist International forced back. Can't get close enough. Um, actually a retro duel, if I'm not mistaken, won by Nile or I don't think they just got close. Now they trigger the call for a switch. We're going to be switching things up, the, the focus. This is classic Blacklist International. Now they're going to be looking into supplementing Oheb. Double laning now, trying to maximize the farm that he can get across the map, because they're going to need that Oh, oh Bloisky! Oh, wait, no, the Holy Baptism able to delay Geek Fam. Geek Fam still running away the Wild Slash! Luke making the play to change the game! Wow! Marky locked on Edward, and Edward finally drops. Sends him with a heavy spin. Just to try to get away, three members, four members of Blacklist International fall. What a play from Luke. The final slash of the day so far, right on point there. Another chapter added to the book of Luke. No, their analysis needed, man. That was a hell of a final slash. <laughs> yep, we're going to take a look at it once again. The instant replay here, presented by Kadia. If you missed it, now you get to see it again. It all in full tier under the tier one turret. Here comes oh, Luke. Laker too. Per picture perfect positioning as an Arlot. That's what you want to get. And despite them being under tower, Geek Fam can just juggle bodies to ensure that they win that out. Luke, my goodness, still continuing. Oh, Rana oh. J. Trouble. Oh boy. <laughs> Gets through with a heel. Geek so Fam just so aggressive right now. Yeah. yeah. In a, in a very quick, you know, decisive play. Now 3K ahead, not to mention objectively. Still in a similar situation where we saw for the previous games, right? Blacklist doesn't have a turret yet. They're kind of restricted in terms of space and movement around the map. Uh oh, Sensui trying to get away here. Geek Fam just suffocating. They're playing so well, meticulously aggressive. Yep. Like, just so well all over the map, everywhere. Edward now. Looking for a target, Raging Sandstorm just to get away. Geek Fam want to take this tower. And this is what we were talking about earlier, actually, for the side of Geek Fam. I did say I was leaning a little bit more towards the lineup of Blacklist International, but if Geek Fam layered their abilities well, found their timings, caught Blacklist International, caught off guard, uh, caught Blacklist International off guard, they'd be taking their conditions. They'd be the one leading the charge here. So that's exactly what they did with meticulous, as you mentioned, their tricks, gameplay around the map, good macro, and finding those little windows of opportunity to counter go during the objective team fights, Givam are just doing what they need to do with the lineup they have to make sure Blacklist lineup won't be able to shine as well, that, as, well it could, as well as it could have. Yeah, and with this, you know, with the lead they have, you can see them put the pressure here now on the side of Blacklist International, at least trying to force these things out of Sensui even. But again, they'll take the buff. Now, my biggest thing here is the time that it takes for carry, right? To kind of build up to that point, the power spike, if you will. How's that comparison against the Claude? Typically, Claude takes a while too, but with this yeah. lead, and we saw the gold difference between gold lane alone, 
you know, OHAB, it's going to take a little bit longer here. We're only eight and a half minutes in. Yeah, there's a bit still, they're both built up to a golden staff. So I think it's good news that carry also has like, you know, two damage. That's going to be good. Well, Aboy now has an Ice Queen wand here. So that's something Blacklist needs to watch out for. Yes, they have that Holy Healing, but those slows, oh. strong counter punishes. Boy, going to respond back though. Edward able to do nothing there. Niall, going to back, ooh. Gonna back off. I think it's smart. You mentioned the Claude and the carry. One of the things about the Claude, though, is even if he's not like fully online, unloading a ton of damage, he still has so much utility outside of that. With the split pushing, with being able to still melt down the Nether Realm. Exactly. To yes. Whereas carry, you just have one job really. It's try to shred down, you know, the front liners. And until carry can do that, there's not much else she can do. Man, yeah. look at this already. They force in Sui. Less than half health. They go ahead and give the ghost signal for the Lord. I don't think Blacklist International could even get here in time. Yeah. And I don't think they have the opportunity to find a counterplay, but I think they're going to try to go for Beloisky. Oh, oh. Beloisky able to get the knockup, though, on two members. Another realm comes out from UA. Marky trying to unload, but Geek Fam maybe just want to disengage oh, here. Edward what? misses, whips into the backside, and now Geek Fam smell blood. Luke looking for one. The final slash to knock Edward oh. out of the sand guard. And wait, Marky to the backside with Blazing Weapon. He's taking a lot of damage. He had to flick back with the BMI. Blacklist International. Might have to lose this tower for the sake of the team. What a play there by Geek Fab again, finding opportunity. Even though Blacklist International sniffed blood, thought they could get Beloisky. Geek Fab was able to chase Oheb. Another wild slash on Oheb. Oheb. Oh, oh my God. Luke, the stone under the tower. He's going to go down for that, but it is worth it today. Oh, again, Luke has been on point this entire game. Actually, the entire series so far, and right now it's Blacklist International trying to struggle to stay in this game. Nearly 7,000 gold deficit to work from. Stone Cold, Mr. 315, add another chapter to the Book of Luke as his legacy grows here. In the series against Blacklist International, committing the flicker just to ensure that kill, he goes down. But now, Geek Fam, they have a little bit more space to work with in terms of getting turrets, getting inhibitors down. All right, Geek Fam trying to move in. They get the stun on to Sensui. Sensui gets oh, heavy oh. spin, though, but the Owens Fury helps Geek Fam. Blacklist International finds Nile, though. Edward. And now Edward with the Raging Sandstorm looking for a boy. The Black Shoes are already gone. Oh. He will go down. Marky in with the Blazing Duet. Blacklist doesn't want to keep the fight going, but at least they keep Geek Fam away. So there's still some fight back from Black International. They're trying once again to allow Oheb to get online here. Real quick, how's the items looking? All right, so it's still an advantage for the Claude here. Up to, okay, so since we actually had to rush a blade armor there, also up to a Radiant blade armor on the Baksha. The two dominance Isis on the side of Geek Fam are causing a bit of trouble here for Blacklist. We see, I believe that's a rush into the Malefic Roar by that Khalid. So once that Malefic Roar goes up, he's going to be like one of the biggest damage dealers for Blacklist International. Well, International has to be because Yue had to go for a more utility route, uh, deciding to prioritize the Necklace of Durant's as his first item, which was understandable, and then going to a Lightning Truncheon. This is crazy too, as you're looking, just the damage dealt so far from the members from Geek Fam. That's something that they have to work from, right? Again, when you have this kind of lead, that's kind of what you expect, but itemization-wise, will fall into place the further they get into the game, especially if Blacklist International can kind of stall things out a little bit longer, right? We're still working with the fact that you really have to allow Oheb to get to this point in this carry. You already saw that Wind of Nature being picked up by Marky. Going to give him some of this upper hand in a lot of these skirmishes and team fights as they break out. Not to mention working around the Minoan Fury and avoiding the final slash from Luke, which has been on point. Edward also trying to bring up some of the damage, right? Picks up a Malif Groy here to provide, once again, that burst potential to possibly put pressure on Geek Fam as this second Lord is now worked on. Blacklist trying to get a position here. Edwards staying in that mid lane, trying to clear that out. As the Lord Dance ensues, we got to keep a track of positioning. Luke, not even a part of this so far. Yeah, one thing about Oheb is he's got the Trinity locked in. He's got his third item locked in. He is officially a threat to the team, but Marky trying to lock on you, maybe force out that Nether Realm a little bit early. Geek Fam taking this slow. They know they have the advantage in the lanes. Blacklist International doesn't want to give this, this Lord up, though. Nice final slash 
Lands on a Sensui. Bloiski able to get the knockup as well. Oheb now making the charge in. Oh. Wait, a five man knockup. Luke into the backside though, locked on to Marky. Marky forced to be him away. Bloiski wow. goes down first, and Oheb's unloading. The Niall looking for it. Can he get the retribution? Oh. No, Sensui takes it. Blacklist International back to back. Games turning things around. We talked about the book of Luke, but add another chapter to the book of the Lord, knocking up people at the worst possible time. You saw their geek fam, Beloisky, had the setup with the Minoan Fury, but then the Lord said, hey, I can set people up too. <laughs> Doesn't matter who I knock up. And then add Edward entering into the back line of geek fam. What looked to be really great for geek turned out to be an unintended disaster just because the Lord's knockup went up in time for Blacklist. And now they make their way down the middle lane. Lord marching in the bottom. Geek fans still ahead here in terms of economy, but you can feel that bite now from Blacklist International. You saw it too. Edward picking up that malefic roar helped put pressure enough to have Marky pop the wind of nature. Get a boy to use that black shoes. That's part of the plan here for Blacklist International. And then the follow through from UA with the Nether Realm really helped them get that advantage. Lord's going to go down here, not before it gets that charge in, but now Blacklist International has some space to work around. A boy doing a good job at trying to fend off the mid side there as well. Blacklist International just equalized this game. Are we going to see another game two situation here, lads? Oh, Back yeah. and forth, pendulum. You want that, Trex? Yeah. It's already been there. We're already there. We just met that there. criteria. Yep. <laughs> Gold Boxes lead are gone. Yeah, this is the reality we live in, and I couldn't ask for anything better. Now, let's see how these two teams will tell another beautiful story of who wins a crucial game number three in this elimination match here in M5. As we look at the items, full build, no, still waiting on the last one there for the carry, already up to a C halberd actually, is that Claude? So Marky's damage will hurt his poke damage. Sensui and of course him being one of the frontline vision givers for Blacklist International has to be a little bit more careful now Make sure that he has Renegade with him when he goes for those vision plays and the timing of Edward. This Khalid becomes deadlier and deadlier as the sands of time falls down the hourglass. Already looking at this damage dealt, the boy has been on top of things here. Picks up a Divine Glaive on top of it. So he's going to hurt even more a lot of these team fights. Once again, as you look at the, these team fights unfold, which are at this point, we're probably only going to see them really around the Lord, right, for the dance, because both these teams even looking at that head-to-head -head earlier. We saw how much they kind of prioritized that. And with Black National favored for a lot of those utility dances, those fights going on, that's even where Edward becomes more crucial, right? His patience to use this Raging Sandstorm is going to change a course of a lot of these fights. The same can even be said for Beloisi on the other side. Or Luke, right? It leaves up to the Roamers, these XP laners. How do they unfold from there and initiate? And that's why you see if they can get a pick off, it's even better. But so far, the stalemate happens. Lord's up. Both teams rotating there to get there for this dance. All right. Geek fam. I feel like this is a kind of, we're getting to do or die for them a little bit, right? Oheb is coming online. Edward just locked in the Blade of Despair. Geek fam does have some great answers to Blacklist International's comps. But so far, when we get into this late, late game, Blacklist International does seem to control the pace a little bit. Now with Lord down to 50%. Oh. Edward into the backside, looking for a boy able to pop the black shoes. Luke holding Blacklist at bay, but they don't want to stop here. Netherrealm is still oh. in play, but there comes Noah's Fury. A boy. First oh. back to Edward, able to find a boy. Marky in the backside with a blazing duet. Bloisky goes down. Luke is going to be next on the chopping block as Edward Nile. picks up the double. Niall trying to get oh. the play. So he takes it from his fingers. Marky all alone against Blacklist International now. Patience is the key here. And once again, Blacklist International turns things around and they march into the base. You mentioned do or die. It looks like it's due for Blacklist. All right, Blacklist coming in. They blocked onto the base. Marky with all he can, cannot withhold against the agents. They did it again. The pendulum swung, but this time back to Blacklist International it goes. Two to one in the series. They get to match point. Patience. 
Again, we were waiting for the timing, the timers. Khalid having that. BOD, him going to the back line to force out the black shoes. The perfect positioning, the perfect nether realm. Though it looked good for Geek Fam, they could have had a shot. It was Blacklist who takes that game. Again, as things settle here, we're going to have it further broken down over on the analyst stand. Leo, Mirko, what happened here? The thing. Do you really want me to do the thing again? It's match point for Blacklist International, and your thing isn't working. You can try all you can, but it's in the hands of our athletes right now as Geek Fam push the tempo, play really fast in the early game with Blacklist again, much like in game two, figuring out the tempo, trading where it matters, allowing for them to recover and make for a run, a final turn, a huge comeback in the mid game to take game number three. Sitting now at match point in this best of five. It's that adaptation, that really quick adaptation from Blacklist International, where they weren't able to completely utilize the ADP, the anti-disaster protocol in game number one due to the tempo that Geek Fam were taking the game in game number two and especially game number three. You could definitely see that minimalized losses kind of gameplay start to work out. They were waiting for those power spikes and when it hit Leo, it made the MVP go crazy. It was ham when Sensui actually pushed back where he needed to push back, pin down who he needed to pin down and hit the retry and even give Nile a run for his money where it mattered. If you'll remember, there were moments in this game where Nile was trying to, you know, force Sensui, see how sharp really his retribution was. And, you know, he learned. He definitely learned, right? Despite game number one, game number two not being the best Sensui we've gotten so far, especially after seeing MPLPH. Game number three, it's, he's back. Sensui, the Sensui that I said is going to be the retry god of the tournament. It really seems like you give him the tools, you give him that space, you give him a 50-50 even, and he'll do it just as long as he ain't stunned down. And I really like the choice of the blade armor here for Sensui, right? He knows he's going to be get, he's going to get hit hard by the likes of Geek Fam. Anyone from Geek Fam, especially the Claude, will try to poke him down, will try to get him off and try to force out a heavy spin. So the fact that he had that blade armor, might as well. If you're gonna dish out damage to me, I'm gonna poke you back. You're liking that item build. I like his emblems, man, especially his talent. The concussive blast might be the secret to how he's so good at hitting retributions. Big ticket objectives. We'll see here in the highlights that the early game wasn't really for Blacklist. Uh, there was a spotlight final right here. slash here by Luke. All right. Oh! oh. Even I felt it. Even I here at the stand, you, you and me were like, ooh. And this was the exact moment where Mr. Wagner himself gave Luke the new moniker. That's right. The Stone. If we can have Dwayne The Rock Johnson, it's only fair that we get Luke, Luke the, stone the Stone Jackson. Jackson. That's him now. He is him. But unfortunately, he isn't that, him enough. <laughs> that kind of tempo was quelled by Blacklist International, not only by Sinsui, because again, he had key hits on the heavy spin, but also Yue with uh, the um, Netherrealm and of course here, that, that turn, that miraculous turn, wherein the Lord helped Blacklist International. You know what uh, else Mr. Trek said, Mr. Wagner? What did he the say? The Divine Retribution. Oh. It was with the help of the Lord that Sinsui secured it and turned the fight around. That was truly the Divine Retribution coming in from Blacklist International. But really what it all comes down to in these Lord dances isn't really anything too deep, right? There was nothing, there was, there was no even feints coming in from Blacklist. They just stayed true to that efficient gameplay. One man makes a call, go in, fight for the Lord, the entire team goes in. It ain't that deep, but it's what works. For Blacklist International, they have been more, uh, I would say, decisive compared to Geek Fam. It always seems like Geek Fam are so confused during the Lord dances. They want to go for it, but then they also want to pull back and reset. And in the end, when you're indecisive, up against a decisive Blacklist International, they're going to take it from your hands. Yep, what comes into play here is it doesn't matter who's first. Because again, for what, nine out of 10 objectives in this game, it was Geek Fam pulling the trigger first. But what actually matters is who does it best. And so far, Blacklist have read into the situation so well and as you can see here, 
This is the Blackness Special. You put Wilderness Blessing on the Roamer and the mid laner, and it's this duo that protects what matters. It's what allows Oheb to double lane very effectively, and what allows Blacklist to answer back again, set up for these amazing trades. And I love the fact that Edward here, we also see a bit of adaptation from him. In both the games, even in this game, I would say Luke had a little bit of a better laning phase, but you can see here with the choice of the emblems, going for the Master Assassin definitely helped him get on his foot a bit earlier in the game to get that Khalid rolling across the map. And that's exactly what we saw. The Khalid turned out to be an assassin in that late game. It was no longer the fighter Edward. We're seeing Agent Zero go full assassin mode. Look at those items. He's taking a few pages from the book of the Hitman. Now, check this out. Aboy, two of these deaths, a majority of them, if not the kill directly going to Edward, was caused by Edward. So if you want to play a Khalid the way Edward does, check it out. Get his emblems, get his items. It's because it was such a lethal threat. I think the fact that he can get away with it and even survive because of the quick sand guard and the way he can disengage and engage with the Raging Sandstorm allows him to be such an important part. Because look, Luke, as soon as he gets the final slash, he's done. Edward can go in and out. Back and forth, not only because of the quick sand guard here, but this is why you can definitely see the masterfully crafted draft by the coaches of Blackness International because how they were able to go back and forth, aside from the quick sand guard, was also the Rafaela pick that literally just goes to show you the full circle of the draft. That's why Edward was given the opportunity to go full damage. Sustain, they've got it. The whole team's got it with that holy healing always connecting to four or more. And not to mention the Nether Realm. Uh, you put the Purify in Yue just to make sure that he's the final uh, line of defense between a disastrous team fight and a winning one. And then you also have the likes of, again, Renege setting it up, helping go in for these finishing maneuvers. Which, by the way, I saw good, solid two or three FHBs, Flicker Holy Baptisms, really turn team fights around. It really did, right? It's such a small ultimate. It's very hard to find a big moment, but Rene J just finds it. Maybe it's the hitman in him, but if we take a look at the DD, the damage dealt here, definitely Edward. Like, what the heck? This isn't what you're gonna see usually in Number your ranked one. games, in competitive games. It's ridiculous. The fact that a boy, by the way, was the main damage dealer gives the Khalid even more value, right? The fact that he was able to bait out so many of these Black Shoes early on basically forces a boy to do no damage in these team fights. He's always going to try to just poke Edward down, try to focus on the front. He can never dive to the back, and that's why you can even see Oheb get a lot of damage dealt going behind him as well. And not just that, the fact that Renegade was there to make Edward's job a little easier. Uh, we were talking about how Aboy, with his little DPS, DOTs, was uh, almost doing close to nothing uh, in the late game. Talk about Marky. Marky was trying to gun down Khalid, trying to gun down Edward, and it's as if the damage reduction from the quicksand wasn't enough. You get the healing from Renegade. What's just crazy? exacerbates the situation. And what's crazy is the fact that Leo, Veloisky loves this hero, right? The Rafaela. You would expect Veloisky and GeekFam to be able to understand how to play around the Rafaela. It has to be something different that Blacklist is doing with this Rafaela composition. Don't know if it's just the individual spacing or the fact that they clump up and make those decisive maneuvers together so, so well. There were layers upon layers of a big ticket ults in Geek Fam's lineup. And again, in the early game, as soon as they got those green dots, as soon as they hit level four, they got the go signal. But think about it. If you spend 